uh, we take the premium experience and, and, and move it out into mainstream cinema. But in the, uh, in the uh, I'd say a dozen or so of our laser installations around the world that were specifically installed to put 3D on a much larger screen, the outcome is uh, basically more patrons per show and uh, there's already an upcharge for 3D in most cases, and in some cases an upcharge for laser and 3D. So there's exi early existence proof that you can put more people in seats and, and uh, with, with su sufficient marketing uh, have a higher price for, for the, uh, the laser 3D ticket, and that's, you know, that's paying off the investment. So, by extension, that could that could occur in uh, in a greater percentage of theaters as we get that brighter 3D. As, as Don says, that's uh, that's key for the uh, format. I think that was an important point that uh, box office is a, is a big driver here. The upcharge 3D is one of the is probably the only area that exhibitors have successfully been able to maintain an upcharge. They can't do it with sound. They haven't. I don't really know if they've been able to do it with laser projection. But they can certainly portray it as a, on the, as a PLF, on the PLF. Right, absolutely. Uh, has, has anyone done any, any exit polls or surveys to see if there's a, a, a difference in perception? There, Not yet. Christy showed uh, uh, the Hobbit uh, clips at, at 14 foot Lambert Last year? I mean, we've been sort of beating that drum at, at most trade shows and laser yeah. demos. It's amazing. The response is always phenomenal, but we've not done a formal audience exit poll at a theater to address the question. But everyone who's seen 14 foot Lambert 3D, you know, they never want to go back to what whatever they're seeing in right. movie theaters. It's true. We don't have an exit poll on HDR either, but you won't find any shortage of attention for that. <laughs> no, but, but 3D three D's got a problem, especially in the US, so you know maybe you should yeah, there's some, some uh, quantitative data here that's for, for marketing purposes to try and get people, people back in the theaters. With all due respect, you put too much emphasis on polling. Again, perception is learned. You need expert uh, uh, watchers showing other people. You can't take a Joe Blow from the, out of the street and, and uh, you know, expose well, Joe, it. Joe Blow from the street is the guy who pays for the ticket. But on, on, on the uh, theater, I, I, I agree with you, but on the other hand, you can also have the reverse problem where the experts and pioneering cinema watchers get to see 3D at 14 foot Lamberts and then they said, I was in New York for a couple conferences last week and it's all like, well, where can I see laser at 14 foot Lamberts? Um, you know, we're not, we're not yeah. ready yet and that's, uh, to Rich's point, the studios aren't going to grade content or not all the studios are going to grade content at 14 foot Lamberts until there's a big enough install base. So we're back a little bit chicken and the egg, but you're right, we have to populate major metropolitan areas with good laser projectors so that both the Golden Eyes and the normal public and the press can go see it, and then it'll pull, just like HDTV, it'll pull the rest of the, the viewing public in. That's, that's... But I just wanted to point out that in my experience, I've not seen a shortage of interest in buying technologies that lead to higher brightness 3D. Well, we have certain challenges in the US because we have an older installed base, but I'm looking at sales around the world and I'm seeing, I'm seeing installations that want that are shooting for 9 foot Lambert, 10 foot Lambert, higher numbers than what we can get today. But also the colors are better on laser, uh, on a DCP uh, file. Well, that's is P3 different in, in laser than, than in... Well, at least on 6P projection, very, very different. I yeah. think con there's, there's the only projector I've seen that has better contrast where I see a really huge difference is the Dolby Vision projector. Okay, that's the gold standard. No. Any 6P, any 6P... I've really seen something stand out that told me that laser was... Jurassic Park uh, trailer, Jurassic World trailer, amazing. I saw it on the Cinemechanica, Barco base, uh, amazing. 80% uh, of the experience of Dolby Vision. The color. Well, well the color is the same whether it's xenon or laser. It's no, it's no, no, you're wrong. No. Mm -mm. 
Not in reality. Respectfully. Uh, I mean, the glaze is capable of white cup again, but if it's if it's TCI, it doesn't yeah. have to be P3. Our 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 audience feedback, not not statistically valid, but our audience and exhibitor feedback, people that have installed lasers so far, is that um, when we have two cases. We have one set of exhibitors that go to a lot of trouble to promote the fact that it's laser and it's new and it's different and they have a whole marketing program around it, that's one case. Another case where they just plug it in and install it, and in both cases they have uh, a positive response to color, color saturation, okay. you have no right idea. issue deformity. There's a lot of details in why laser is better, technical details, which I'm sure we'll get into later, that explain why but the audience doesn't need to be told that xenon, average xenon projection and laser projection is different. Blue push is a different story. Blue, blue pump phosphor, that's that's right. lesser than xenon. I'm, I'm referring to RGB yeah, yeah, and premium yeah, but, lasers. But at, okay. at the same luminance though, they aren't, aren't, I mean they're mastered to the same color space. Well, the first, they're, they're the same luminance. Okay, we'll get into it. The first, the first difference is uh, with a xenon projector at the same foot lambert's in the center, okay, you can have 75% in the corners and still be in spec. With a laser projector, you can have 95% in the corners. Okay. That, that's a huge difference. Um, the amount of screen gain you need, how that uniformity of brightness and color across the whole frame interacts with high gain screens. Because if you've got a xenon projector with 75% of the corners, and the high gain screen together, first of all, you lose all the seats on the sides, and uh, it just, it's a hot spot. not as good, you got a hot spot, it's not as good, as good an experience. So, okay. that's one of the technical reasons why, people, but there's, to come back to color for a minute, because of the, the saturation of laser, it's the XY point point may be the same, in other words, when you put the meter on the Xenon screen versus the laser screen, the XY point may be the same, but to the audience, the laser colors are different, better. More lifelike. Look at the, 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 the more and more movies are going to be shot in HDR because there's an emerging consumer market. And if we don't have a theatrical solution that can do HDR economically and deploy it in a, in a mass market, that's going to create a problem. The a IMB. Problem. Use the <laughs> IMB as a Trojan horse. There's a, you're talking about a content project, the content pipeline problem? Yeah, the workflow is, is, is got lots of problems. Not just no. the pipeline, I'm talking about theatrical projection solution, HDR solution. That Because if, if I can get it in my home on my HDR TV, you'll why can't I get it in the theater? You'll expect more. Of course. Maybe they'll distribute it in UHD Blu ray. And uh, it will. maybe it looks good. That's right. This is an interesting question. To the question. cinema. I mean, my, my U.S. sales director came to me a few weeks ago and said, Don, this Dolby Vision thing is great, but what about HDR for the great unwashed? Uh -huh. That's the point. How are we going to roll this out to every movie theater? Because people are going to start to expect it in movie theaters because they can get it. You can get a Vizio TV. That's the point. With, with HDR capabilities. I mean... And you're leaving the projection guys out in, in, in the lurch, which is not fair. Since we all uh, represent companies that uh, have sold a, a, a ton of xenon-based projectors and the, the overwhelming installed base is still xenon projectors, can we all agree that the foundation for any HDR, DCI 2.0 or, or what have you, for mainstream cinema, albeit premium mainstream cinema, has to be laser? Yes, if absolutely. Could, if you do 10,001 with xenon, we'd be doing it, right? If absolutely. If you do wider color gamut with xenon, we'd be doing it. So I think the, the takeaway here is whatever Hollywood and the consensus ends up being, and your point is, is valid, Chris, studios are, are all in on high dynamic range for TV. Uh, so they're going to look for a solution, but not for, you know, 0.1% of the screens around the world. They're going to look for a solution that that will um, proliferate over time uh, across the entire cinema, cinema market. And to do those things, practically, a laser light source is... It's indispensable. Indispensable. So, so I think that's, it's I think like, that's the no, key takeaway. Don't waste your time. Audiences. Yes, there's going to be a better... ...by the light engine inside the projector side. I think there's 
Uh, they can they can add cooling also inside the projector. They had 60 at their demo. The no. Yeah. Which one? Two modules sitting there. I saw the 19, and I saw the Jurassic World right after Dolby Vision. And I said, wow, this is like 75% of Dolby Vision right here. So there's no reason to go to a laser projector unless you want more brightness. But if you don't modify the, the cooling of the light engine, you're in, you're in trouble. Oh my god, I don't agree. It's a simple world, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's always a fire beware. Well, I mean, like there's no reason uh, to give people your, your hidden menus that you don't use, for example, for panel registration. The only lot. company that, that has, okay, okay, it's called the Spatial Color Calibration. All the 4K chips have some kind of degree of, of color missing uniformity. If you, in, the install projector, you take a reading at 25 spots, and you send that to the factory, they'll send you a loot file that corrects that and you're gaining like 15% more resolution. Only Barco has been doing that. Now I hear that Christy calls it uh, PCP. NEC, uh, it's hard to get calls back, so I don't know. So you're compromising, don't compromise. This is a message I gave the same signal router guys. You need better lenses also in the 1.2 to 1.4 range, more resolution. What is this? People are using 1.2, the 2K chip lenses in that range. There is a, a huge market for like a small PLF, you know? I guess you don't have a, that's not a question you're making comments in. I, I, I am, well, because he's saying he, 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 they're cutting corners. I see them cutting corners unnecessarily. You need laser for the better color, absolutely.